Hey guys, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm showing you my top five recipes where you use the grill. Now, if you've seen this channel before, you know I love sharing Instant Pot recipes or air fryer recipes, but we're switching things up because one of my most favorite things about summertime are the barbecues. I love anything barbecue. Now, usually we do a lot of burgers and hot dogs on the grill, but this video is a little bit different. I'm gonna show you how to cook a few different things that are not burgers or hot dogs. They're some of my favorites. So if you guys are ready, let's just jump right in. The first recipe is called Huli Huli Chicken. It's one of my favorites. I actually have a recipe of this in the Instant Pot, but you can also make it on the grill. Mmm, I love it on the grill. All right, so the first thing we want to do is get a marinade. So I have actually two pounds of chicken tenderloins in here. Now you can use chicken breasts if you want to, but I like tenderloins because they're all about the same thickness all the way through. So that's why we're sticking with tenderloins today. First, we're gonna add about two teaspoons of minced garlic. On top of that, I chopped up some fresh ginger just into small little pieces. Now, fresh ginger makes the world of a difference and it tastes so good with that ginger in there. All right, now it is huli huli chicken, so we do need some delicious pineapple flavoring. I got a can of 20 ounce sliced pineapple, so we're just going to drain the juice into the marinade, but you're gonna wanna keep the sliced pineapples for later. On top of that, we're gonna do a half cup of soy sauce. I love marinades that have soy sauce in them. Now we have a third of ketchup, Woo! I usually just estimate ketchup. Like, whether you do a third or a half a cup, it will still be delicious. Then you're gonna do a third cup of brown sugar. This is packed brown sugar, so I packed it into my cup, and then just dump it in. The last thing we're adding today is sesame oil. Now you can find this at any grocery store, it's super easy to find, and we're just gonna add one tablespoon of sesame oil. All right, once that's all done, now if you notice, these are my freezer meal bags. It's also one of my favorite things to use when I'm doing marinades because I just like to marinate it in a big gallon size bag. You're just gonna zip it up, get all the air out, as much air as you can, and you are good to go. All right, then you're just gonna take it and just mix it around really good. Now I love my marinades if they marinate overnight or for 24 hours, but if you are short on time, even just marinating them for an hour will make a world of a difference. All right, all ready to go. I'm just gonna stick this in the fridge and then we'll get grilling in a little bit. All right, just pulled it out of the refrigerator. It's been marinating for over 24 hours. I am super excited. I'm gonna be turning this to about 325 degrees. We're ready to go. Now the goal with the chicken is to get it to 165 degrees, so using a thermometer is good because you don't want dry chicken. And these pieces are little, so they're gonna cook really fast. We're gonna keep chicken on this side, and then we're gonna do corn and my pineapple on the other side. Hey, time to flip over my chicken. It's looking good, oh yeah. Now after I flip the chicken, don't worry, I wash the tongs and I'm flipping over in the pineapple. All right, once your chicken is done and has reached 165 degrees, pull it off because it is done. We're just gonna let it rest for a little bit while we're pulling it off. Don't forget to pull off your pineapple. Now, I'm just gonna add a little bit of cilantro on top. You can also add green onions too, it would be amazing. Next up is Philly cheesesteak. Now, I want you to watch this video very carefully because if you do it right, if you follow the instructions, it is Amazing, probably one of my most favorite things, probably the most favorite thing on the grill. So first you're gonna start with a red pepper. Now I'm gonna show you my little trick. This is how I cut a pepper. You just cut the outsides first so you don't even have to worry about the seeds. Next we're going to slice the pepper up into very thin slices. I have a red pepper, green pepper, and then sliced up an onion too. Next we're gonna take a ribeye steak and I'm actually gonna take two of them. They're really thick right now and here I'm gonna slice them into, again, pretty thin slices. The thinner they are, the faster that they will cook, and I just like to cook my Philly cheesesteaks this way. 
Now while I'm cooking my Philly cheesesteaks, I'm also going to be grilling up some zucchini. So I'm slicing it pretty thin. Now the trick with zucchini is to try and slice it about the same thickness. That way they'll cook evenly and it'll be a little easier for you. Now it's time to fire up the grill. I'm using my Blackstone grill that I got right off of Amazon. This is my favorite, one of my favorite grills because it's like a big giant skillet. You can cook all kinds of things. And because it's all seasoned, it makes everything taste so good. All right, so I'm putting a little bit of olive oil on it, spreading it around so we can get ready to cook the food. First, we're gonna add the onions and the peppers. Now you can cook them just like this with some salt and pepper, but I have this brown sugar steak rub that I'm gonna add onto it just to give it a little bit of kick. You don't have to, you can just do the salt and pepper, but I like to change things up a little bit. Man, I wish you guys could smell this right now. I love the smell of cooked peppers. All right, then on the other side of the grill, I'm just gonna start cooking my zucchini. Now, I am gonna put a little bit of the seasoning on, but I really actually just like salt and pepper. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit more olive oil on top of the zucchini. And go ahead and just stir and mix that around until it's really cooked all the way through. Now because I have a lot of zucchini, I'm just gonna be kind of stirring and mixing quite often so one side doesn't burn. Then I'm just adding a little bit of salt and pepper onto the vegetables. You just want to cook these until your vegetables are pretty firm still, but cooked through. All right, once my onions are kind of brown, that's the sign where it's time to pull it off because I still like a little bit of firm vegetables in my Philly cheesesteak, not soggy vegetables. And my zucchini's done at about the same time, so I'm gonna pull that off of the grill too. Now I'm gonna oil up the grill a little bit, making it ready for the ribeye that I've cut up into small pieces. Now I am still on medium high heat, so that means that this meat is going to cook really quick. So you wanna be watching it carefully, stirring it around, making sure everything is cooked evenly, but watch it because you don't want one side to burn and the other side to be raw. Now I'm adding more of this brown sugar steak rub. You can add whatever steak rub you want. Just make sure you put a little seasoning in there because it will make the steak taste so good. Now a Philly cheese steak, this one you're not gonna get the the raw tender steak, everything will be cooked pretty evenly, even inside of the steak because the pieces are so small, but that's okay. It tastes so good this way. All right, once they're almost done cooking, go ahead and add your vegetables back and you're going to mix those all together. Oh man, just the smell and those colors make me wanna eat it right now. So now I'm gonna shape the, the meat and the vegetables into serving size portions. So as much as you want on your Philly cheesesteak sandwich, that's how much you're gonna put into your serving size portion. Now I'm gonna add the cheese right here on the grill because you want it nice and hot and melted. Now you can do big pieces of provolone. My big pieces, my kids ate it all, so we're just doing some delicious fresh mozzarella that we've shredded up and we're just putting right on top of the Philly cheesesteak. Now while that's melting, I went ahead and put my buns straight down on the grill. Just having those buns a little bit crispy in the inside is absolutely delicious. Now, once everything's ready to go, we put our bun on top of the serving size meat and vegetables, kind of get everything together, put the spatula underneath it, and then flipped it over. Because with the Philly cheesesteak, you want the cheese on the bottom of the sandwiches. And that's all there is to it. These things are so good. If you want to put a little extra cheese sauce on top, you can, but I like them just like that. Now this one's a little bit different. This is our Mexican street corn. Now if you've had grilled corn, you know what's delicious, but Mexican street corn is a game changer. So I'm gonna start off with eight ears of corn. Now this is a package that I got from Costco and it's all ready to go. So I'm putting it on my Blackstone grill. It's like a giant skillet and I love cooking my food on it. So it's all oiled up, ready to go, and I'm just putting my corn right on the grill. Now I'm not adding any seasoning yet, that will come. So I'm on medium high heat, and when it starts to brown a little bit on the kernels, I'm gonna just barely turn it so I can make sure that I cook all the kernels of corn. Now this will take a little bit of time, but trust me, it is worth it. Then. If you can see on the other side, I'm cooking hamburgers at the same time that I'm cooking my corn. 
Now after I've done a few minutes on each side, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. Now you wanna keep the corn hot still, so I'm gonna cover it with some foil. Then I just left it on the counter while I got everything else ready. So I'm grabbing a nine by 13 pan. This is what just makes it easiest for me. So you're first gonna add a fourth cup of mayonnaise and then a fourth cup of sour cream. And I'm literally just putting this right into the pan so I don't have to dirty one more dish. Next, we're gonna do a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Now this is really small Parmesan cheese. And then one teaspoon of minced garlic. And last, you're gonna add a half a teaspoon of some chili powder. Now you can add some lime, you can add cilantro, but my kids don't really like it when I add those things in, so we're just gonna mix it up as it is. Now as I'm mixing, I'm somewhat spreading it all across the bottom of this nine by 13 pan because I'm gonna roll my corn on the bottom of it. Now once it's all pretty even on the bottom, you're gonna grab your corn and hopefully your corn is still nice and hot. But of course, not too hot, you wanna be able to touch the corn. All right, so now I'm just going to slowly and gently roll the corn into the mixture. Now it's okay if you get some thicker pieces, because the corn's so hot, it'll actually kind of melt into the corn. So once all the corn is covered how you want it covered, go ahead and just put it on a separate plate. Then just continue doing the same thing to all of the ears of corn. Now you wanna let them sit there for a few minutes so everything can kind of soak into the corn and that you still want to serve them hot. So let them sit and then serve them. I like to sprinkle mine with a little bit of cilantro on top or parsley. Or if you need a little more salt and pepper on top, now is the time to do it. Next up is chicken fajita kebabs. Now if you're looking for a little healthier option, this is a little bit healthier, but a ton of flavor are in these kebabs, so you might wanna try them out. All right, we're gonna start with two pounds of diced chicken, and then one to two red peppers. I used the small ones so I could have different colors. Next, you're gonna chop up an onion into big pieces and then dump it into your bowl too. Now add about a tablespoon of olive oil. I like to add a little bit of red pepper flakes for some taste if you want some heat, add a little bit more. About a teaspoon of garlic powder, about a half a teaspoon of salt, and then that is it. Just mix it all together. Now I'm making these more Texas style, so Texas really likes to focus on the meat and the vegetables of just their natural flavors. So that's what I'm doing. You can add more flavor if you want, but I like just the basic ingredients. All right, so my trick with the skewers, soak them in water for a few minutes before you start putting the, the food on so they won't burn. All right, my kebabs are looking beautiful. I love all the colors in there. Now it's time to get cooking. Now I'm cooking these right over the flame on medium low heat, and I'm gonna turn them every few minutes or so until the chicken is cooked all the way through. Now the other trick with kebabs is try and chop your vegetables so they're about all the same size as your chicken and of course the other vegetables. That way they'll cook a lot better. Now once they're done, go ahead and take them off the grill and they are ready to serve. Now you can serve them by taking everything off the skewer. That's what I do for my kids, but for the adults, I let them take the food off their own skewers. And there you have it, fast, easy, delicious kebabs. I saved the best recipe for last. This is a recipe that we had growing up almost every single barbecue, it's my mom's seven up chicken. It's one of our most popular recipes on the website with millions and millions of views. So if you need a good grilled chicken recipe, I'm telling you this will be your new favorite. Now I like to put my marinade in a gallon size Ziploc bag. It just makes the cleanup so easy. So I'm gonna take a half cup of soy sauce and put it right into the bag. Next, I'm gonna grab Sprite or any lemon-lime soda. Just make sure it's not diet. So you're gonna add a can or about one and a half cups of your favorite lemon-lime soda. Now you just need a little bit of oil for the marinade. So I like to use vegetable oil, about a fourth a cup of vegetable oil. You can use canola oil if you want. And then last, you need about a teaspoon of horseradish sauce. Now, if you don't want to buy a whole thing of horseradish sauce, my mom used to go to Arby's and get some of those little packets, and those work perfectly. And that is all there is to this marinade. So go ahead and zip it up, mix it around really well, and then we are ready to put the chicken in. 
So I just want to show you my little trick with chicken. Now these are chicken breasts and they're really thick in the middle and then they get really thin on one side. So in order to even it out a little bit so they cook more evenly, I just like to take off the top of the chicken breast so it will not only make it more even, but it will cook a lot faster if it's not so thick. But if you still want large chicken breasts, you can just throw them right into the marinade and it will still taste delicious. But I like them thinner so the marinade will get everywhere in every bite. So now it's time to just throw the chicken into your freezer bag, zip it up, make sure all the air is out, and then stick it in your fridge for eight hours. You can even do up to 48 hours and it will taste amazing. Once it's done marinating, it's time to put all the chicken onto the grill. Now mine's set at 350 degrees and you're just gonna cook it for about 15, 10 to 15 minutes on each side. Once it's been about 10 minutes, because they are thinner, I'm doing 10 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and just flip them over. I'm gonna close the lid here and let them cook for another 10 to 15 minutes. Now you want the internal temperature to be 165 degrees or you can cut it open to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. Now once they're done, pull them off, go ahead and wrap foil around them and let them rest for a few minutes. All right guys, if you need more dinner inspirations, this is the place to go. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next week. Bye.